Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockoff, authors of the leadership development books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose. At Gapology, our purpose is to help leaders achieve their greatest potential. To learn more about our groundbreaking books and training services, visit our website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. If you're looking for a great gift for a budding emerging leader on your team or in your family, take a look at our books, Gapology, Imbar, The Pathway of Transformation, or even Speed of Purpose. They make excellent gifts that can help your special person all year long and really throughout their entire work career. For more information, head on over to our website, capology.org. And tonight, Mark and I will be jumping into a new series discussing some key things to look at when building your leadership rhythm, the consistent, predictable method to create impact and action with your team and yourself. And tonight's topic will focus on analysis to create impact. So let's go ahead and jump right in with Martinez. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Good, Brian. How are you? I'm pretty good. Recovering from uh, all the turkey and all the fixins and everything from Thanksgiving last week. That was good. How was, how was your Thanksgiving? Well, Thanksgiving gets better after Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. You're, you're, really, you're really missing out. So you take the turkey and mm-hmm. uh, my wife, Darla, turns it into turkey pot pie, uh, which we just had tonight. Oh my God, it's so good. Oh my God. I love pot pie. Oh my God, it's one of my most favorite things. Yeah, it's, it's literally better than Thanksgiving. Oh, it's crazy. Man. I'm jealous. You need to freeze some and mail it to me or something. Yeah, okay. I'll look yeah. into that. <laughs> Maybe I'll reach out and get the recipe from her. <laughs> you should. It's, yeah. it's quite exceptional. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm glad we uh, resumed. I know you're heartbroken that we took last week off. Yeah, it was it was hard, you know, but you, you get over things and uh, mm-hmm. you you get better and you prepare for the upcoming week. So here we are. True, true. Yeah, and I know how devoted you are to these. Well, do you really know how devoted? Well, on the last call, you said you were you would be sad that we didn't do it. Yeah. Well, tonight I got a call. Right before, uh, well, right before we started here, inviting me to the Sacramento Kings against the Golden State Warriors. Ooh, ooh, oh, really? They're in L- town. Lug- luxury box and all of that. So, and oh, I man. said, uh, you know what? No, I can't come. <laughs> I've right. got to record a podcast with Brian <laughs> to, to change the world and oh, to help God. all of our leaders out there, you know. So, Steph Curry, sorry. I cannot uh, cannot be there. <laughs> wow. Well, I I I mean, I appreciate your devotion. I'm sure I would have been sitting at the game uh, trying to Zoom message this with you uh, while I was there. But uh, I, I appreciate your being here live. Yeah, I didn't want to miss it. So yeah, <laughs> oh good. That's a true story, folks. Just so yeah. they just so they know. Well, of course, just like all of our stories are are true. Well, and pot pie, very true. Yeah, man. Now I'm hungry. I'm going to go have another helping, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I think I have some pizza rolls in the freezer. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we are kicking off a brand new series tonight. Um, now that we're done with Thanksgiving, I think it's time to look at something maybe a little bit new to close out the next few weeks uh, through the end of the year, at least. I think we'll get through these. So, this new series is going to be all around leadership rhythm specifically looking at how we can create impact with leadership rhythm. Uh, We've talked about leadership rhythm on the call many, 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 many times. Um, And I thought it'd be kind of interesting to pull together some tips, um, some techniques, some strategies uh, to create impact with our team, uh, with our customers, uh, the people that we support, but also within ourselves as well. So, so tonight, uh, let's kick it off by looking at analysis. I think that's really one of the first places that we want to start is taking a step back, slowing down, intentionally devoting time to analyze our business, the things that we consider to be the most important things, analyzing that data, looking at our key performance indicators, those KPIs uh, that can really drive our overall results. Um, but I'd like to kind of start here, Mark. Uh, what do you think? Well, if you step back a little bit 
if if I may, uh, leadership rhythm matters. Mm -hmm. When a leader is predictable and predictable in the right ways and uh, the team knows what's coming, it shapes their behavior. So leadership rhythm is designed to shape the behavior of the team. So as a leader, you've got to figure out for your business, for your team, what that looks like. But leadership rhythm matters. Leadership unpredictability and chaos uh, don't produce great results. Leadership rhythm done correctly produces great results, likely the best results. So think about your rhythm, your predictability, what it's all about, how your team perceives it, and you can really benefit from that immensely. So just the topic of leadership rhythm is significant. And I would tell you that most leaders have not thought this through, Brian, mm -hmm. and determined for their business, for their team, for their set of metrics that they're responsible for, what the leadership rhythm needs to be. And when they determine that, they they win, they win big. Yeah. I totally agree. I think, and we've said on the on the call, you know, a few times is that our the team behaviors reflect the leader's behaviors. So if you are predictable, if you have a leadership rhythm, your team is going to reflect that. They're going to develop their own rhythm, their own predictability that you can count on as a leader. Yeah. And then, you know, when you take it to the next level, you look at the metrics that are measured mm -hmm. and they have to be the right ones. And then so the rhythm ties into those correct metrics, the metrics that move you know, whatever the big number may be that you're that you're going for. I tell the story, and I've told you this story, about uh, a company we were working with, very successful company, but they had 45 KPIs, mm -hmm. key performance indicators. They were looking at 45 different numbers and measuring people in 45 different things. And what happened was the teams sort of select the ones they're good at, and you know, you know, tout those. Um, uh, I was sort of in charge and I locked the leadership team in a room and I said, we are not leaving this room until the 45 are five. What are the top five? Mm -hmm. What are the ones that drive the bottom line? What are they rank them for me? And we came up with one through five and we held the team accountable for those one through five. We came predictable and had a leadership rhythm around the one through five and the business quintupled, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and, and I think that that can be a challenge for companies that are pretty established. Uh, the larger the company, the, the more KPIs you usually see. Um, one of the things that we always say is that is a great sort of true North is your purpose. If you can develop a clear and compelling purpose, and then you wrap your KPIs around that, you know, determine what that is and then, you know, build it so that your KPIs would predict, but also when leveraged, when you're, when you're coaching your team, those behaviors would drive toward that purpose. Yeah, no, that's huge. You know, have you defined for your organization what the KPI looks like from a metric standpoint? Mm -hmm. Well, what are the measures that, that show that the behaviors of the purpose are in play. That that's huge. Mm -hmm. And one, once you narrow this this group down, you can you can really then develop the rhythm and drive those. And you know, compare the driving of five versus forty five. It becomes much easier. It becomes narrower. It becomes more succinct, et cetera. The other thing that comes into play is. Let's say that you're going for EBITDA or NOI, bottom line profit. There are short-term metrics that are predictors of that. You need to know what those are. And those likely are the metrics that you would measure weekly, as an example. Whereas you might only publish your KPI EBITDA quarterly or, or monthly, potentially. So what are the short-term metrics? that really deliver the big number that you're that you're going for. And those are the things you hold the team accountable for. You have to know what those are. You can't just go for the big number. You won't get to the big number unless you know the short-term predictors of that, which are which are metrics 
uh, with within the business that you're in. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You, you know that is a key point there. You know, it's kind of like saying, "Hey, I want to, I want to drive all the way to Florida." But you don't know how to get there. You don't know where those milestones are, you know, where to make the turns along the way. You know, you really don't measure that progress toward your end goal. Um, so if you, you know, have a EBITDA number that you're going after or an NOI number that you're going after, and it's a large number yearly or quarterly, you know, if you only use that as your guiding post, you, you can get lost and very quickly fall off uh, your progress toward it. Absolutely. So know that number or those numbers, report them, create significance around them, and have a rhythm around them. One organization we work with would publish those short-term numbers every Monday. Well, the power of every Monday is that the team knows that their name is going to have a number next to it, a ranking number, every Monday on that short-term metric. Well, wow, that affects the behavior all week long because on Monday, my name will have a number next to it. That's my family name. That's my name. It's a big deal. So it, it creates a behavior that you would like to have in your team and you can help them refine that behavior to be very effective at driving the number. But there are often short-term metrics that get to the long-term metric that you're looking for that you have to rank. So the um, salesforce.com has built an entire industry around creating short-term often metrics that drive the business. They're incredibly successful. They use a process called exception reporting where your team is ranked in a series of metrics that matter. Uh, very few of them, by the way, and uh, they drive behavior. And behavior of your team drives the big number and that smaller number. You've got to connect with those things and then create your rhythm as a leader around that. Yeah, totally. The process of doing this weekly, I think that's that that starts to establish that leadership rhythm, so that predictable behavior. Um, if you only did it once a month, that I think that would be less visible to your team. It'd be harder to set that example for their behaviors if you you know had that longer time span in between. I think it's critical to do it every week. Um, and when you're looking at your metrics, I'm curious, Mark, where do you think they should start? Uh, you know, what what type of uh, behaviors would you want to be looking for? Um, what would you want to do there? Well, that's a great question. So you certainly want to look at your purpose if you have one and find out where your purpose is being fully executed and see what those metrics look like. Mm -hmm. um, in Gapology, we talked about uh, the A group and the C group. So we were we were keenly aware of the top performing group and the difference between the behaviors there and the bottom performing group. And that, that helped us uh, understand, you know, where the behaviors were in place. Very similarly, if you have a purpose, uh, what's it look like from a metric standpoint? You probably already know, you may not have looked at it. So where, where the behaviors are in place, what do the metrics look like? That gives you a glimpse into what they could be for the entire organization. So understand that. And then expect that you might have to talk to the entire group about those behaviors and reset the expectation to that level of metric, if that makes sense, where the purpose is fully in play. But that gives you this huge glimpse into the into what could be. And once you've connected with that, everything is possible. Uh, the other thing that that we did in Gapology is we were very aware of what the metrics were and the behaviors were for the bottom performers. So we knew what that looked like. When you contrasted that with the top performers, it became very clear that if we simply did this, this, and this, 
we could move the whole organization forward. And that is what we did. And it, it, it changed everything. So I don't know if that answers your question, Brian, because it, it's, it varies by organization, but there is a set of metrics for your organization, for your business that equals excellence. And you need to connect with it and it needs to be narrow. I suggest three. I, I would say five is the maximum number of metrics. And those are the metrics, again, that, that reflect the delivery of the behaviors that you expect. Yeah, I love it. I, I love that term when you said contrast. I think that's the key. When you're looking at the contrast between the winning performers, that A team, that A group, looking at you know what they're doing, what are the behaviors that are in place there, what needs to be replicated, what needs to be repeated, um, you know, really understanding why you're winning in that area. And then also looking at the contrast of that. So w- looking at that C group, why are they not winning? Uh, what behaviors are not in place that they have? And then from that, I think you can really look at, so what performance gaps need to be closed? And I think that gives you your your marching orders for the week. I mean, it really seems like that is just really the great place to start. And I like what you said about keeping it narrow, that three to five is key. Um, otherwise you'll be going after, you know, 50 different things. Yeah. I don't, I don't know any organization that's winning that's going after more than five metrics. It just, it just doesn't happen. I'm, I'm unaware of that in any way. Narrower is better, but you you have to, as a leader then, Carve into your rhythm observation of behavior. So weekly observation of behavior is ideal. So if you weekly picture this, if we if you on a weekly basis were observing the behavior of the top performing groups in your company, in your organization, and you were observing the behavior of bottom performers, the contrast the word you liked, would be clear to you. And once that becomes clear to you, you can make it clear to the organization and you can change the world. Mm -hmm. Brian and I were um, observing uh, at one time in our careers behaviors that equaled $45 transaction per customer. And we were observing in the same environment behaviors that equal $35 per customer per transaction. The difference in the behavior was significant. Our team's behavior was totally different producing 45 than producing 35. Once we knew that, we were able to change and communicate. And again, our behavior as a leader became rhythmic around creating the 45. We knew what it was. We saw it. It was there. If you ever need help with it, we're we're pretty good at figuring it out as well, right? Yep. Yeah, definitely. You know, and that's the that's really the key is that this whole exercise and analysis must create action, you know, from you as a leader. So, you know, it's just sitting down every week, looking at your numbers and then never doing anything with that information. Um, it's not going to do anybody any good. And when you're looking at creating a le- leadership rhythm where you you want your team to look at you and you, you know, analyzing your numbers to create action, you want them doing the same thing. Yeah, as a leader, you, maybe you're accountable for, again, profit, bottom line, e- EBITDA, NOI, whatever it is. You've got to connect with those short-term behaviors and metrics that are producing it. And you can do that. So you can you can find within the team, within the group, where metrics are quite different. And those are the metrics that are are the predictors of profit, EBITDA, and OI. And once you connect with that and the behaviors that equal those metrics, it's off to the races. Everything changes. So those are the metrics that you would put in exception reporting, ranking, as an example, on a weekly basis. You don't, you don't have NOI every week. I, I know that. But you've got to find out what the metrics are that you do have on a weekly basis that are the predictors of NOI. Mm-hmm. Once you have that and connect with that, the analysis piece becomes easy 
and uh, creating great results, you know, comes with that. So, right. Yeah. And I think the key then from all this is to, again, pull out that mirror that we talk about every week and look at your own behaviors as a leader, you know, ask the questions that you need to build your action plan accordingly. So, you know, what am I doing now that's creating the the wins? What am I doing now that's creating the misses? Uh, What behaviors do I need to replicate, repeat, and enhance in order to, to, you know, repeat those wins? And then what root solutions can I apply that would close any sort of performance gaps? Yeah, and spend time during your week when possible observing behavior. So that you as a leader, not only see the number, but you see the behavior that equals the number. Once you know the behavior that equals the metric, the number, everything changes. It, uh, it's different. It creates uh, an observation that allows you to see what uh, training needs to be conducted. You know, knowledge gap stuff in gapology. It gives you insight into how to deliver the the result that you're looking for. So don't miss that. Mm-hmm. Don't, you know, spend too much time speaking and giving direction. Spend a lot of your week observing, listening, and taking notes, asking questions. Game changer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, Mark, that's really a, a great point. When we look, when we talk about analysis, uh, observation is part of that analysis. It's not just looking at a screen or a piece of paper. It's actually observing, watching, paying attention, and then you know doing something with that information. Well, th- well, think about if you saw the number on a page, whatever the metric is, and you had observed during that week the behavior that equaled that number. As a leader, that would change everything for you. You would know if that's a great number. You would know if that's a deficient number. So once you tie behavior to the metric, you become quite powerful. So you you can't just operate from home necessarily and see that. Mm-hmm. You You may have to, in the business you're in, get out there and see that. Maybe it's possible to do it, you know, through computers. I, I am not good at that. I don't know that. I did, didn't grow up in that world. But um, if you can see the behavior that ties to the metric, however that is, everything changes. Mm-hmm. The behavior that ties to the good metric, the behavior that ties to the poor metric, you you become the uh, deliverer of great results once you once you connect with that because it it changes your perspective and your focus on on what can be mm-hmm. so yeah yeah in a zoom world it's it's very different uh than being able to stand next to somebody and observe uh but you know be creative uh, think about ways that you can do that perhaps you're adjusting your meetings your zoom meetings uh where people are are reviewing their actual you know actions and that kind of thing so so you know think that through for your business what makes sense there but, uh, you know, get creative with that. Yeah, I think leadership rhythm is a, is a key, and mm-hmm. it's often missed by many leaders. Yeah. They don't know yeah. about it. And uh, when it's combined with an analysis of metrics and an analysis of behavior, you can really become significant in terms of performance. It's, it's really a game changer. So uh, add it to your repertoire if you don't have it already. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I think this is a good place to leave it. Okay, well done. Good. Yeah, good you job. too. All right, we'll talk to you later. Have a good week. All you right. too. See ya. All right, that'll do from here. For more information on Gapology, head on over to our website, gapology.org. Everyone have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology Institute production. Visit us at gapology.org.